Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw a rough collie in graphite. Now before I start working on the fur, the first thing that I like to do is get the eye completed. Now my first aim here as you can see is I'm just focusing on the outside shape of that eye. I'm building up my values gradually, getting that outside layer of the eyelid as dark as what is required. Now I'm paying very close attention to the size of the eye and the shape of the eye because if I don't get these things right then it will change the expression and the emotion of that animal. Now when it came to working on the fur I do like to break everything up into smaller manageable chunks but more so when I've got a reference photo or a fur texture that's a little bit more challenging like the longer real thicker fur of a collie. Now here I do find that by breaking it up into small manageable chunks, I don't ever become too overwhelmed by the process. So therefore, I seem to give more time and attention to that layering process, which helps to build up more of that depth and realism. We're less likely then to rush through that part of the portrait. Now, one thing you can see here is when I'm working on the shorter fur around the eye, I do just focus on that one small area. But as I start to work on the longer fur up close to the ear, that base layer that I've applied is a little bit more of a larger area. Now the reason for that is longer fur, you've got more of that freedom of movement. So one section of fur, one length of fur is then likely to either overlap or attach to the next section of fur to the left or the right. Now here is a prime example. As I start building up my layers here, really focusing on my values, so my lights and my darks, I like to make sure that I've created a bit more of that softer, silkier transition. So I don't have any harsh start and stop points. Now you can see as I'm building up my base layer here, again, how I'm mapping in my lights and my darks, but I've kept everything on a bit more of a larger area. So around the eye, it was maybe just one square inch, but for this area, because this longer fur but that's in front of the ear currently is longer, I needed to make sure that I worked on that larger area in order to build up the softness of that fur. If I was only working on real small sections here, I'd end up having start and stop points between each individual length of fur. Now the length of the pencil strokes for this sort of fur texture is very important. Now I've got a few tutorials here on YouTube that focus on how to do correct pencil technique when drawing fur, so I'll link one of those in the description below if it's of interest. But the pencil technique focuses on three things. You've got your fur length, fur thickness and fur direction. Now all three of those things here are very important. The length of those pencil strokes, as I've just mentioned, that's what's going to help to make this fur texture have that length and that free flowing movement. But we've also got to focus on the fur direction. So there are many times here where it curves up, it rolls over, and none of those transitions there are random. They do follow the underlying bone and muscular structure. So for instance, we've got that curve of the um, highlights in front of that ear. That there is really showing the shape of the skull and where that ear attaches to the side of the head. So these things here are all decided and made to look realistic by the fur direction. So it is something there to pay very close attention to. Now in terms of the fur direction, something else that works well with that is where your shadows and highlights are placed. So if you've got your fur direction accurate, but some of your shadows or your highlights are maybe too low down, far too much over to the right for instance, then that is also going to change the shape of that animal's face. Now when we're working with pet portraits, it's very important that obviously that replicates and looks like that animal and that pet. So if we get those highlights and shadows in the wrong place, we're going to potentially really adjust the shape of that face. So underneath the eye here is a prime example. You can really see how that curves and dips at the lower section of the eye. This is hinting at where the eye socket finishes and then attaches to the cheek. So all of these fur directional changes and transitions are very important to capture. And this again is why I like to work on small sections so that I don't ever rush through or skip past any of these important changes. Now because I feel that the pencil technique, the layering process, how we apply our graphite pencils to the paper are so important, it really does affect how well the erasers work as well. I do like to record all of my tutorials for my Patreon channel in real time. So this tutorial is available there with no section sped up or cut out and I'm explaining everything while I'm drawing. So there are no areas where I skip past anything, it's all explained in the moment. 
So if you would like to draw along to this or any of my other in-depth tutorials, then I'll link my Patreon in the description below. Now the wonderful thing with Patreon is you can stay for as long as you like or you can cancel at any time, it's very flexible. So on to the next section of this portrait and I'm going to start working now with the fur that's a little bit longer. Now you can see that I'm really focusing on the softness so it's not all about using our pencils to achieve all of those details. We need to be making sure that if there's any sections of the fur that do look soft, even if it's a little bit out of focus, like the edge of this dog on the left hand side, that I do adjust my approach. So I want to be focusing on blending and softening techniques as well as those fine detailed pencil work. Now the use of erasers is something that I like to incorporate in every single one of my graphite portraits. But in order to make the erasers work to the best of their ability, the graphite has to be applied in the right way. So if I was to work with only one or two heavier layers of graphite, those erasers are going to have a real difficult time of trying to lift that graphite to add your highlights. So this again is something why the layering process and how that's applied to the paper is really important. It's not just about getting your values right, it's also paying very close attention to how that graphite is applied so that we can then remove that graphite later on if we need to. Now this reference photo that I used for this portrait was really beautiful. The out of focus areas here added so much extra depth and it was something that made it very interesting to draw. So the mouth and nose of this dog was out of focus and then everything else was in sharp detail. So here when I started working on this section of the portrait I had to make sure that again I've adjusted my pencil technique to make sure that there was not too many details in this area. So you could also work with lighter pressure, small circular movements to achieve that softness, but again the layering process here is important. Now if you've seen any of my other tutorials here on YouTube, you'll know that I focus on the contrast more than anything else. Now if the colour of a portrait was the most important thing, then graphite wouldn't look realistic, but that's far from the case. We can create some very photo or hyper realistic portraits and it's all just through focusing on our values. So you want to get your darks dark enough and your highlights bright enough. Now as I'm building up my layers here, that's exactly what I'm focusing on. The nose and mouth part of this portrait was one of the darkest sections of the entire photo, so I had to make sure that I also captured that in my drawing. Now as well as that, of course, I'm now focusing using my softening and blending methods. So this is now where I'm going to be using a couple of paper blending stumps here to get that graphite on my surface and that's just going to help to give that initial softness so I don't have to create too many details with my pencils. Now the one thing when working with graphite, I do find that the pencils can create that harshness for the first or second layer. So this is where using your paper blending stumps or your eye makeup applicators can work really well. Now when working on the mouth of any subject, I do like to break it up again into small sections. So first of all, I'll usually either map in the tongue or the gum area, but I will break it up into those two sections. I won't work on one layer for both elements because that there we can find that it becomes again too overwhelming. So because there are often a lot of structures on the gum area, you've got the teeth that need to be added in, it can add more confusion to that area. So if I break it up into small chunks, only focus on the tongue, the gums and then the teeth, I'm not ever focusing on one complete element. So that's something that I will always do. And again, I've broken this up into two sections. So I worked on the back teeth and the gum section and the back of the mouth first, and then I started working on the front. Now that I've got more of this mouth drawn in, you can really see how soft and slightly out of focus it is compared to the fur. Now again, that's all because I was using more of those softening techniques with my pencils. So I haven't actually used many of the blending tools like my paper blending stumps once I started applying my pencils. But using the pencils in a different way, making sure that you're not adding details there, can help to, again, build up that softness. I do find that with this out of focus element, if I was to go back in there to soften it with my paper blending stumps, that I end up removing that graphite. Now that then of course is going to affect the contrast because your darks won't look as dark because it's actually lifted that graphite. So in those situations here, I did prefer working with my pencils to achieve that softer, slightly out of focus effect. So my main aim for creating this tutorial for my Patreon channel was to show how to draw long, soft, but really thick fur. 
So this section of the chest is one of those areas where it's going to demonstrate that so, so well. The first thing here that I want to be making sure of is again that I'm mapping in my fur direction. I'm focusing here on that pencil technique and then my softening techniques as well. Now in terms of building up the layers here, knowing what layer to draw at the right point is going to help to make this fur look realistic. If we start getting confused with which fur we should be drawing first and leaving last, then it's going to make the fur look a bit flat and two dimensional. So you can see that quite often I'm adjusting how I'm holding the pencil. Right at the moment I'm using more of the pressure at the end of that pencil rather than close to the lead. All of these things here are going to affect what that pencil stroke looks like. Now that's very important here because I needed this fur to look different to the shorter fur on the face. So adjusting how I'm using that pencils is the way to achieve that. Now one thing that's going to become more clear as I work on the larger areas of the longer fur is I am having to draw in this section of the chest first before I can finish the bit of fur above it. Now the section above that is going to be overlapping the lower part of the chest. So if I were to finish off adding those details like I am now, if I were to do that first and then work on the lower part of the chest, I would have had to have drawn around all of those highlights. Now that of course is far more time consuming and it makes it far more complicated than it needs to be. So if I've got an area of fur that's behind something else, I will draw that first and then I can add that next layer of fur on top. Not only does it make that process far easier, but it does add more realism to that portrait because we're drawing the fur at the correct layer. Now again, this is something that I cover in all of my in-depth tutorials on Patreon because I do feel that this is just as important as good pencil technique and how to use the pencils themselves. So I really do hope that this video has been useful. If it was, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. And I do upload two to three videos here to YouTube every week. So if you'd like to get notified of that content, then hit the subscribe and the bell button. As I've mentioned, if you would like to draw along to this or any of my other tutorials on Patreon, then I will link all of that in the description below. So my Patreon channel does focus on the pet portrait side of things as well as wildlife subjects. So there is a mixture of both so that if any of my Patreon members did want to take on pet portrait commissions of their own, then there's a wide variety of subjects there. They can use the tips and techniques that I show in the tutorials in their own work. So if you would like to see the list of tutorials that I've got available on Patreon, then I will link my Patreon library in the description below. And if you do have any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments. I'm more than happy to help if I can. I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube next week. But as always, thank you so much for watching.